In this online lecture, we're going to talk about number one, that there are many ancillary benzene reactions that aid in modifying substituents on a benzene ring. We're also going to see that two, these ancillary reactions can be grouped into these categories, which are radical halogenation, SN2, SN1, E1, or E2, reduction, and oxidation. Before you watch this lecture, you should at least learn the general reactions for benzene in aromatic rings, such as halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, Friedel-Crafts, alkylation, and acylation. We're going to see that these reactions we're learning in this lecture simply give us more options to create and design different molecules. So that's why I'm calling these ancillary benzene reactions. And it would be very wise to arm yourself with these reactions before your next orgo exam. So for instance, let me show you what I'm talking about here. If you take this molecule right here and react Br2 with light, we learned before in a previous online lecture that this reaction replaces a hydrogen on a carbon with a Br. But if you remember correctly, it rips off the hydrogen that has the weakest bond. And if you also remember correctly, the hydrogens on this carbon right here would have the weakest bond because they are benzylic or allylic hydrogens. Remember that means they're connected to a carbon that's one step away from a carbon involved in a double bond or a benzene ring. You might recall that these CH bonds would be weak because if you take them off, you leave behind either a allylic carbocation or a benzylic carbocation or a benzylic radical or an allylic radical, which if you also remember is relatively stable because it has a lot of resonance. So that means the CH bond that we're going to break here is on this methyl and we're going to replace it with a CBr bond like this. Now again, notice I'm calling this an ancillary benzene reaction because this reaction in itself is not really an aromatic reaction. We're simply only affecting the methyl on the benzene ring. But remember, it's not as if the benzene ring has nothing to do with this. It's the benzene ring that makes that methyl reactive enough to participate in this reaction. Now, if you remember correctly, there's another version of this reaction. We could use a reagent that's simply better suited, and that is NBS instead of Br2 and light. If you remember from a previous online lecture, this delivers the same product. We're replacing an allylic or benzylic hydrogen with a CBr bond. Remember, this reaction is typically preferred because it has a simply better yield. But either reaction is acceptable on an orgo exam. Now, let me show you the benefit of knowing this particular reaction. Think about it. Once we do this, then we can follow this reaction up with, let's say, OH minus. And look what we have here. If you call this molecule the substrate, you call the Br the leaving group, and you call the OH minus the nucleophile slash base, then what you have here is a setup for an SN2 mechanism which means the nucleophile, remember, is going to attack this carbon that bears the leaving group. We're going to boot off the leaving group, and we're going to end up with this as a product. So simply put, knowing the NBS reaction enables us to put a leaving group on a substituent on a benzene ring so we can set up any SN2 reaction we want. For instance, let's put this all together here. Let's say you're on your orgo exam and you want to predict the product of this reaction. Well, the first thing you would think of is, well, I'm reacting NBS with this, so I know what that's going to do here. It's going to add a Br to this carbon right here, which is going to give me this right here. Then you're looking at the second reaction, NaCN, and you ask yourself, well, what's going to happen here? Well, remember, NaCN is a salt, so it's going to break up in the solution to Na plus and CN minus. And if you remember from a previous online lecture, CN minus is a pretty good nucleophile, which means this could participate in an SN2 reaction by having CN minus attack this carbon, boot off the leaving group, and we'll end up with this as a product. So notice the benefit here. By placing a good leaving group on that methyl on the benzene ring, we're able to add any appropriate nucleophile. This gives us a lot of options when we want to design or synthesize molecules.
Now, that means if you're a smart Orgo student, you should remember that if we're just putting a good leaving group on this molecule, it means that it might be possible that we can set up not only SN2 reactions, but maybe even SN1, E1, or E2 reactions. Well, look at this example right here. Let's say I take this molecule and I react this, teret butoxide and teret butyl alcohol. Notice our reagent on the left here has that BR decent leaving group on him. And if you remember from a previous online lecture, teret butoxide is a very strong base that forces E2 reactions. So what happens here is we're going to force an E2 reaction, an elimination, and therefore get this as a product. So again, if we use the NBS reaction to place a decent leaving group, we can also perform, in this case, an E2 reaction. Now, let's look at even more ancillary reactions here. We've seen this reaction in a previous online lecture before, and that is if you take H2PDC, you can possibly reduce a double bond to a single bond. So the product of this reaction would be reducing this double bond right here to give us this product right here. But very important here, notice the double bonds within the benzene ring are not affected by this reaction. Simply, the H2PDC is not powerful enough to reduce the double bonds in the benzene ring. Remember, aromatic rings are extremely stable, and the molecule would like to retain its aromaticity, so it doesn't want to react with the H2PDC. However, we do have a reaction that will reduce double bonds in an aromatic ring, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But going back to this reaction, I want you to know that there's other uses for H2PDC when it comes to benzene rings. Like for instance, if you have a nitro group on a benzene ring, if you add again H2PDC, this will reduce the NO2 group on your benzene ring to simply an NH2 group right here. Again, remember, let's look at the big picture here. In a previous online lecture, we learned that if you start out with benzene, you could nitrate benzene, which means adding on an NO2 group. Now we're learning through this reaction that we can reduce it to an NH2 group. And again, we like these kind of options in organic chemistry. However, this is not the only reagent that can accomplish this goal. You can also perform this reaction right here, SNHCl followed by OH-. Notice this delivers the same result, NO2 being reduced to NH2. Which begs the question, which one should I use? Do I really need to know both? And the answer is yes, because let me show you an example here. Let's say we're designing a molecule and we get to this point right here. If we were to use H2PDC on this particular molecule, what would happen is we would get this as a result. Notice what's happening here. The NO2 is getting reduced to NH2, and even this carbon right here is being reduced to CH2. So both substituents are affected in this reaction. However, if we use the other reaction, the SNHClOH-, then these reagents only reduce the NO2 to NH2 and leave the other substituent untouched. Again, this gives us a lot of options when we're designing molecules here. Let's look at some other example of reduction reactions in these benzene ancillary reactions. For instance, I can take this molecule right here and add 2H2 with rainy nickel as a catalyst. What we end up with is this right here as a product. Notice this is turning the C in the nitrile group into CH2 and the N in the original nitrile group into an NH2. We might need to use this reaction later on. And even another important reduction reaction here, here it is, I talked about it before. If you take a benzene ring and you react 3H2s with nickel under a high temperature such as 250 degrees Celsius and high pressure of 25 atmospheres, then you could possibly reduce all the double bonds in the benzene ring to single bonds. Think about this, this makes perfect sense. We would definitely need some hardcore conditions here to make this stable aromatic ring turn into just simply cyclohexane. So we should also know that this reaction is possible. 
Now let's talk about another classification of these benzene ancillary reactions. Here we just talked about reduction. Now let's talk about oxidation. We talked about in another online lecture how KMnO4 is a very powerful oxidizing agent. And what ends up happening in this reaction is we get this as a product. Notice what's happening here. If you saw this on an orgo exam, all you're really doing is taking this carbon right here and simply turning it into a carboxylic acid. That's the quick product method, and I'd like you to use this on your next orgo test. But remember, there are a lot of oxidizing agents. For instance, instead of using KMnO4 to perform this reaction, you could also use these reagents, Na2CrO7HCl in heat. You would end up with the same result. Different organic chemistry textbooks and professors have variations of this oxidation reaction. It would be wise to consult either your professor or your textbook to see the other possible reagents that perform this reaction. However, there are some nuances here that I'd like to discuss. Like for instance, let's say we perform this reaction on this particular molecule. Notice instead of having a one carbon substituent, it has a three carbon substituent. I'd like you to know that this doesn't really change anything. We still end up with this as a product. Again, notice all we're doing is oxidizing this carbon right here to a carboxylic acid and therefore expelling the remaining two carbons. So obviously there are some side products to this reaction, but we really only care about this particular product that's shown here. And also this means that if this were, let's say, a five, six, seven, eight carbon long chain, you would still end up with this same product here. However, there are some exceptions. For instance, let's say we had this molecule right here and we perform our same oxidation reaction. I'd like you to know that if this carbon right here that's directly connected to the benzene ring, if he happens to be a tertiary or quaternary carbon, which means in this case, if you're just considering the substituent and not the rest of the benzene ring, that carbon in the substituent itself would be a tertiary carbon. What I need you to know here is that no reaction will happen. We won't get oxidation. And there's even a more simpler way to think about this. From now on, the carbon that's directly connected to the benzene ring, if he doesn't have any hydrogens on him, he can't be oxidized. And notice that's exactly what's happening here. Now, just in case, let's look at a few more oxidation type reactions here. Notice in this reaction, we're reacting MnO4 in heat. In order for this oxidation reaction to perform, the carbon directly connected to the benzene ring has to have an OH group on it. If that's the case, that carbon will be oxidized to the C double bond O carbonyl group. There is also a variation of this reaction as well. We can also use Na2CrO7HCl in heat, and that will also oxidize that carbon, but this time it'll oxidize it further to a carboxylic acid. Notice in the previous example, we didn't get a carboxylic acid, we got a ketone instead. So think of Na2CrO7HCl in heat as a more powerful oxidizing agent. So there it is. Our key points here, number one, we saw that there are many ancillary benzene reactions that aid in modifying substituents on a benzene ring. And we also saw, too, that these ancillary reactions can be grouped into categories, radical halogenation, such as Br2 and light and NBS, SN2, SN1, E2, and E1 reactions, reduction reactions, like we saw with H2, PDC, and oxidation reactions, such as using KMnO4. I sometimes refer to these reactions as the flashcard reactions, as in it would be wise to maybe make flashcards of these and have them at your fingertips come your next orgo test.